you make the completely asinine decision of I'm just going to go and waste my life <laughs> sitting underneath airplanes, <laughs> not getting paid yeah. jack crap to make this photograph. Or at least yeah. that's what it looks like from the outside. This yeah. is where and I want to talk about an personal depiction. work. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you to, to anybody else that's looking at this, you'd be like, okay, Mike, you're getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to do what you do. You're telling me that now you're just going to spend the next several weeks sitting underneath airplanes and just like editing out for free. That makes yeah. no sense whatsoever. <laughs> but let's talk oh. about personal work and why it does make sense. So tell me about that experience. That, I mean, it's, it's, that to me is a, a creative outlet that I find very enjoyable. I don't have a client telling me what to do, where to put the camera. I'm making photographs purely for myself to fulfill my excitement with, and my sort of love for the genre. Um, but the interesting thing is that those pictures now are a substantial part of my income. Um, I think last year I did 88,000, I net like $88,000 in print sales off of pictures that I made years ago without, I mean, I, I don't touch them. They just sell. From wasting time sitting underneath airplanes, you now make $100,000 a year. A whole, a whole other income stream. And this year has been lower because of COVID, but also the pictures have a whole new life of their own <laughs> because a lot of those airplanes have been retired. They're not economical to fly anymore. So I kind of captured aviation um, at its peak, if you will. It will never look like that again, which is I got really lucky with that. But the idea was that was something I just wanted to do for myself. It was like a, a cool concept that I saw. And I kind of took architectural photography techniques of photographing the same scene 10 different ways and compositing it all together. And I was like, I can do that with airplanes. I used to go watch airplanes for fun. I would get breakfast or lunch and go sit outside of LAX and just watch planes take off, which I find very calming for some reason. I'm strange, I know. And so I'm like, why don't I photograph planes like I photograph architecture? And the first one was a huge hit. It went crazy viral immediately. Um, it was all over the place. It was on Good Morning America. <laughs> yeah, it was all like you could not for it was almost like a month for a straight month. I would wake up. And we run a publication as well. So like everybody's sending yeah. me tips and stuff. And for almost a straight month, I'm just getting tips. Hey, have you seen this picture of Mike? I'm like, yes, we've seen it. We've published it. We've talked about it. Like <laughs> we've seen it. Stop. So yeah, this thing goes crazy. And it, it, it brings me back to like, there, there's this mindset of, now, I don't want to say that it's only photographers that think this way. I think there's this kind of mindset in other areas too, whether you are a, an animator, whether you're a painter, whether whatever it is. For some reason, those that are just entering the space, those that are usually newer in those areas, have this kind of, well, you shouldn't be doing it if you're not getting paid sort of philosophy. There is you know, this concept that free work damages everybody else and this concept that if you're if you're going out and you're doing something and i couldn't disagree with it more because if you look at any successful like like this is one great example your own case study right here but you look at any athlete look at Dwayne Wade you cannot tell me that he's only playing basketball when he's being paid to play basketball no right. every single professional athlete is doing the thing 99% of the time when they're not getting paid. And then the 1% of the time that they're getting paid, they show up and they do what they know. They show up and they create. Now, when you release that image, when it did what it did and it went around, that to me was a signal to every airline, to every airport, to every person that would say, hey, this might be of interest to us, that, okay, Mike Kelly just created this really cool thing. This would be really great. Maybe we're going to change it up. Maybe we're going to do something a little bit different, but we want this in our airport. We want this in the lobby of our you know, business. We want this, or we want something similar to this. Can, can Mike do this with cars? Can Mike do this with a, a racetrack? Could Mike do this? It signals that you're ready to hire for these other things. And you've not only, mm -hmm. you've not only sold those prints, but you've also worked 
several gigs, right? Where people hire you to come yeah. in and photograph. Yeah. So FedEx, for example, hired me to do one, which is really a, a, a very cool experience. Uh, I did one for the Dubai airport. I did one. No, it was Emirates. It wasn't the Dubai airport. Emirates, the airline, had me do one for their... So tell me about that. You flew 20... out there? It was... Yeah, it was their 25th anniversary, 30th. It was one of their anniversaries. And they wanted one of all of their air, aircraft in the photo. And that was a pretty cool experience. Um, That's and so while cool. I was there, I, of course, did one for myself, which was just the Dubai airport in general. But I did one for Emirates, and that was the original reason I was out there. And then uh, I did one for the Auckland airport in New Zealand. And so it's opened all these interesting gateways. And not only in aviation photography, but in architectural photography, strangely enough as well, people will be like, oh, like I saw your airport photo and I was like, that's really cool. And then I went to your website and I was like, oh my God, he's an architectural photographer. I got to hire him because I'm an architect. It, it, it was just, and I think the whole thing points to the trend or the idea that if people will get along with you, they'll hire you to do anything. <laughs> yes. You yes. know what I mean? Uh, and I feel like half of our job as a photographer is making sure that people will get along with us. And in my case, in particular, if someone can see that they're going to have shared interests or shared hobbies, and we're going to be stuck in a small room together for 12 hours photographing a house as we work through the thing, there'll be in, an more interesting time for them than someone that is a complete dry as a bone, you know, no hobbies, no interests, whatever. So that is a... Just photograph things you love. You know, if you love guitars, photograph guitars. Maybe you'll you'll have a client who is a guitar enthusiast, and on your personal site, they will see, oh my god, like we could get along on this subject and chat about it all day while we're shooting. Or whether it's maybe it's cars, maybe it's who knows what. Um, but I, I would say showing that you, you know showing your personal side, your personality is a huge a huge part of getting hired as a, as for, at least for what I do. I don't know about you. No way. Um, it, it completely is. And, and I would say yeah. there's a smart way of doing this and a not so smart way. Like we're not saying, I'm not saying that if, if you are a wedding photographer or let's say you are a digital artist and you've been doing something for 10 years and you're good at it, yeah. you'd be a complete ass if you're like, okay, I'm going to go and just work for exposure. I'm going to go and, you know, do this thing that I've been doing for this long and I've proven myself with, and I'm going to go and do it for free. That's devaluing yourself. What we're talking about I literally, is <coughs> stepping I outside. Think the is, yeah. If you, if you self-directed work is amazing. If, you, if you're not getting paid for it, it's how you grow and develop as an artist. But when people are telling you what to do, that's the difference. For sure. They have, I mean, if you're getting paid, you have, so, you're, you're operating on someone else's agenda. Like you have to do what right. it is that they're asking. Right. So but tell if, me about if you're doing your, yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. So, so yes, I, I agree with you a thousand percent that every person needs to be doing their own personal work because that's the only way to signal outside that, Hey, I'm also qualified to do this. Hey, I can also do this. People hire for what you show them. And that is across the board, not just in this specific vision, uh, you know, yeah. specifically to photography.